South Jersey Red Boys. The 4th of July holiday special. Here we are. Going on. Yeah. We're back at it again. Uncle Sal here for a uh, great another episode. Episode 49, I think. 48, 49. Something like that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we're going to roll with it and uh, see what happens here ahead of 4th of July. Do you got any big 4th of July plans? I don't have any big plans for 4th of July. I just uh, probably barbecue it up, probably get hammered. Yeah. Probably dress uh, Jackie Boy up. Get yeah, some patriotic gear. Get a little patriotism going for the man. First Fourth of July. His first one. Yeah, get a little patriot. May, might I suggest a red, white, and blue outfit to complement that? Some uh, red and white Under Armour sneakers. You can go to them at the outlet. Thirty uh, percent off. A lot yeah. of people have been wondering when they would see these puppies match an outfit, and today is that day. And maybe the only day. Yeah. Because not that many people have all red sneakers. Yep. The grass cutters. Yep. The Under Armour mm-hmm. matching with the red, white, and blue. It's it's it's, it's a move. It, it's, it's definitely a move. A move. Um, it's definitely a move. I've always wanted to be a trendsetter, not a trend follower. Yeah. Um, you know me. You know how I get yeah. down. You, you look know. like a trans setter. I'll <laughs> yeah. tell you that much. I do look like a trans Uncle Sam, don't I? <laughs> yeah. Uncle trans. Yeah. And there's not that there's anything wrong with not that. Not that there is. I'm all for it. If Uncle Sam was trans, do you know how crazy good of a direction this country would go in? How do we know that he wasn't trans? That he has a very andro- androgynous name. Yeah, and the, uh, the only pictures I've seen of him have been from the waist up. Uh, could have been pre-op. Not sure. Yeah, he could have had a fucking <laughs> Turner in that hooch. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's no way of knowing. Oh there, yeah, dude. No, there, yeah, there might have been a taco beneath them shorts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way of knowing, and I don't think we can say with uh, full certainty, uh, factually, that that was the case. So yeah. I think we should leave it open to interpretation, just like a lot of things. Um, We've always been open to interpretation. We have been, yeah. A lot of it. I have been as well as uh, um, Uncle Sal is Uncle Sam. This is my like inner character just speaking out. I'm, I am uh, Uncle Sam's alcoholic cousin, Uncle Sal from Cumberland County, and uh, I believe the CIA murdered JFK and RFK, and I also believe that- RFK is still alive. No, no, RFK Senior. Oh, his, yeah, dad. his dad. His dad. You're right. Or no, his I just, uncle. I just Wait, pulled. A oh, no, 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 his dad. His uh, uncle was JFK. You're right. Yeah. I just pulled a Donald Trump. <laughs> you see him he was like, he was like JFK Junior's a great guy. <laughs> I, I know him very well. It's like it's RFK Junior. But easy mistake, Donnie. I'm not not trying to. Oh you know, man, Did they, you give him a hard time. You, you had two big blunders the last couple episodes. You told uh, Naeem on our last one that it was Black History Month. Yeah, man, <laughs> I am really screwing the pooch. I, it's just, you know what? I was tired. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I also just didn't, you know, just completely biffed it. Yeah, we're we're at world's end here. You got a lot of stuff going on. There's we're a talking tons. aliens. I can't remember which month is what, and we're talking aliens. We we got a guy that literally believes the CIA killed his uncle and his father, which isn't far from the truth i think it is the truth he's running for president and is polling pretty well i'll tell you what i'm he's got my vote he's got my i'm vote i'm going rfk all the way here we go that's right did you see him doing some push-ups on instagram yeah dude that guy looks fuck he looks like a ripped pat sajak i am all for it (laughs) i was horned up dude like we need a buff president dude we have these old geezers that are falling left and right yeah let's get a guy in there with a chest get a guy in there that's got some pecs and he's got some shit to say about the cia let's get him in there yeah dude look look, put fucking arnold schwarzenegger in your cabinet let's have just a jacked oh that would be congress jacked congress yeah oh man it's swole boy sunday over at Congress. It's time, dude. You know, we've we went completely beta for a while yeah. and I think we're we're shifting the complete other direction. Yeah, we, we tried. The experiment we tried, we tried it failed. And look what happened to you. Yeah, look what happened when you had a bunch of soy boys trying to get into politics. A lot let's of just, soy boys. I'll get, tell you what, dude, my penis has been feeling weird. Uh not it's like you when you have the sensation that you gotta pee, but you don't. But you don't have to pee that much. Huh. Yeah, just <laughs> That's just how it's been lately? Just, just, yeah, past couple of days, keep feeling like I got to pee, and I don't. But you don't. It's like having a UTI. You ever have one of those? Oh, maybe. Is that what I have? Uh, You might. You very well might, although it's it's more of a burning type, but, like, you would feel like you got to, like, piss like a racehorse, but then you can't. Like, it's a problem. You think I would? (laughs) Yeah. 
<laughs> UTI, baby. Yeah, I love a good UTI. Yep. I uh, had one of those suckers in uh, college while I was home on spring break. You got a UTI yep. in college? Yep. And apparently it's not common for men to get those. <laughs> Did you drink some cranberry juice? Dude, I was drinking cranberry juice, but the problem was that I was substitute teaching at the time. Cranberry juice is nice, by the way. It is great. And you can go for a UTI right now. <laughs> Dude, if you if, get me an excuse to drink cranberry juice, I'm going to do it. If it means getting a UTI, find me the dirtiest girl from Woodbury, and I'm going all in. I'd get a UTI just for the for the juice. Yeah, actually, I think we should set out to do that. It should be my goal for the summer to get one of those so there I can drink go. cranberry juice. And no. cranberry juice, not cranberry juice cocktail. That shit is just fucking... Yeah. That's for um uh like for the birds yeah that's for the birds to put it nicely um so yeah definitely cranberry juice is great i had that when i was substitute teaching i had to go in and out like you were a sub i was a sub yeah fun fact the state in new jersey all you need is 60 college credits and that uniform and i could show up in this uniform and they wouldn't be able to turn me away i'm like i'm a taxpayer <laughs> in this like you're working for a place that your taxes are going towards it's kind of amazing what, what would you do when you would go in there just flip on a movie um, no, actually, sometimes I had to teach lessons. It was a problem. <laughs> fourth grade. You remember in fourth grade, like I taught in the school district I grew up in. Fourth grade, um, they had the same teacher do all the lessons, like all gotcha. the subjects. So you had to know a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. Same kids, everything. They sniffed my bullshit out by yeah. 10 a.m. Luckily, you know a little <laughs> bit of nothing. Exactly. Yeah. So when the afternoon came around, they're all hopped up on crack and chocolate milk, <laughs> coming back from recess. We're in there and we got to do long division. And I have to teach teach a lesson on it yeah manually they don't fucking have calculators or they had cell phones but they weren't allowed to use them fourth grade i'm like what the fuck so i don't know how to do long division yeah i have to pretend to know how to teach long division and have kids get the correct answers so what's the longest duration of, of days back to back that you had to sub is it usually just fill in for a day yeah so really as a sub a lot of times like that you're just a babysitter that's basically what it is in some classes not a bad gig not a bad gig sometimes in history I'd throw on the Patriot with Mel Gibson I'd get a little what? into it really yeah like, that, it the, wasn't in the curriculum in the fourth grade uh, it, yeah the Patriot the guy throws a fucking axe through a dude's chest yeah but it, dude's head gets blown off with a cannonball yeah but Memorial Day was coming up up. I was feeling patriotic. Patriot. Some people got really into it and started yelling about the Jews. <laughs> But like, you know, it just really gets me hyped up. Got in a little, it was a little bit of a doozy. I was in the vice principal's office as an adult. Do you know how emasculating that is? Wow. What and happened? They were just like, uh, we heard you showed the Patriot to some students. Did you like, actually do that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Bro, I, I knew that, that is so violent <laughs> for a fourth grade class. But the problem was, is that I knew the vice principal. So I thought I could get away with anything. And they're like, yeah, we got a couple of calls. And I was like, oh, like great reviews about what I'm teaching in class. Yeah, like, all the kids went home like, mom. Oh, I saw a dude's head get blown off by a f cannonball. I will say that they weren't traumatized. They were just really hyped up about it. They were raving about it to oh, their parents. Bet, but the parents weren't raving about it to the school district. Usually was, they flip on like Mulan or something. You put on yeah. the goddamn Patriot. Yeah. No yeah. Gibson with a tomahawk. Yeah. Luckily, I was only in there for that day because the next day I was going to put on Schindler's List. It was going to be a bit yeah. of a... Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So... As you were teaching conspiracy class? Yeah. I'm joking around. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you ends up like Roseanne. You see the heat she's catching? No, what'd she do? On Again. Theo Vaughn's podcast. What'd she say? Th this is so ridiculous. I, I saw some clips of her on some, there. Some, that's, what, that's the problem, is that they'll take stuff out of podcasts. They, they're going to do the same thing for ours when I decide to run for office in 20 years. They're going to be like, did you hear him on this podcast where he was screaming? They clip up something completely out of context with what you said previously. Right. Roseanne was talking with Theo Vaughn, and she was being very sarcastic about the election results and saying, Saying like, oh yeah, you're not allowed to say that. So yeah, I agree that it definitely wasn't rigged and there was enough votes for that. And she was sarcastically saying it. Yeah. Her next line, she went a little into left field and was like, yeah, and uh, the Holocaust was definitely, um, did not happen. Those people didn't die. And she was trying to prove a point that she could say one thing about the election and would get censored, but the other thing she really wouldn't. And she was kind of, it, it was a little weird of a comparison. However, she was being very sarcastic and trying to make a point and and they were just like, did you see that Roseanne said that the, there was no Jews killed in the Holocaust? It's like, that's not what she was saying seriously yeah. at all. What are they going to even do to her at this point? It's like that you already canceled 
canceled her show, which was the like one of the biggest shows yeah. of all time. Yep. And she's still wildly successful. Can, she'll just always be able to tour as an amazing stand-up comedian. She'll be fine. One of, if not the greatest, uh, if you can even say the word, female comedian, a uh, woman that happens to be a comedian out of all, like, I mean, just going back. Well, you could say a pioneer as a woman in comedy because Absolutely. she was one yeah. of the first that had done a lot of things that uh, nobody else had done at that time. And really went for it, too. That's and, what I mean. And I loved listening to her on podcasts because she'll tell her stories and stuff. Like, she got hit by a car at 14 and had brain damage. And she's, yeah. she's like, legitimately mentally ill. So that's why... Yeah, like, I've heard Ro- Rogan talk about that constantly, the, of his yeah. theory that he's known a couple of people, two of the most famous being Roseanne and uh, Sam... Um, Fuck what? Sam uh... Sam Kinison. Oh yeah, yeah, who yeah. Who got yeah. in huge car accidents and it apparently ch- completely changed their personality. Yep, and made them just you know, absolutely. Like, I guess who they yeah. are today. Yeah, it's really yeah. interesting though to think like because he had said she was in a mental hospital for like a year or something like that after getting hit by the car and it completely changed her personality. It's yeah. wild. The hood ornament of the car, I think it was a Buick, like it like broke skin on her head. Like it went into her skull. Oh like, my God. Yeah, she got like nailed in a crosswalk or something like that. Damn. Um, so yeah, yeah. And it's like, she also had a comedy special come out on Fox Nation. Like, let's like, come on. Like everything that she said, I just think sent her in that direction. And now mm. she kind of talks politics a little bit in what I've seen and especially with that. But like, she's also on a comedy podcast. Yeah. And I, I hate when people say, oh, she's on a comedy podcast with Theo Vaughn, who is known for saying very out there things. Yeah. Nothing usually controversial like that. But the stuff he says is so wild. Like, just like, you know, out there. Like, you have to get him as a character yeah. to understand what he's saying. And people are like, oh, did you hear? Like, it's a serious podcast or something. Like, it, it's ridiculous. Yeah. And people are, you know what they say? People are dumb as shit. They are dumb as shit. And that's why I love this country. <laughs> Yeah, because it's just full of dumbass people that just get in submersible things and try and explore the deep depths of the ocean. Last time we were on here, we were talking about 95, drove over that new sucker uh, th- this past weekend, oh, actually. Did you? I did. It was nice, nice, smooth. How'd she handle? She handled great. Handled great. Like, like she was brand new. Kicked the tires around a little bit on that sucker. They put some, um, what'd they do? They put some rocks underneath uh, the old dude, 95? Or? Driving over top of it, I didn't go like on the side street beneath it, although I did when I had to go around it. I was going up to bet on the horses on uh, Father's Day. Nice. Uh, up at Parks. That's a great time. If you've never been, if anybody wants to venture over the bridge there uh ben salem at parks the horse racing is like you can like minimum bets like two bucks and if you bet two bucks and you get some stuff right you can like win like 10 or 12 it's a big day for holy me. shit i'd be down for that, that dude, now that's great. some money i am willing to risk oh yeah dude it's not like a, a two-piece a two-piece yeah you just throw it in the machine you just pick a couple horses there was a horse there that was named riding with biden and it ended up winning and it was an underdog and people were fucking pissed yeah which well, i it's... horse named biden you gotta put that thing down yeah <laughs> Yeah. Everybody was just yelling, the horse is going to fall as it's getting out of the gates. Yeah. These, these drunk old guys are just losing their fucking mind. But it, it is fantastic there because I'm looking around. There's a lot of people there, a um, lot of drinking, a lot of barbecuing, a lot of partying. It's a great atmosphere. But I'm like, why don't they have a Kentucky Derby, like a version of the Kentucky Derby at parks and ben salem could you imagine just how different of a vibe it would be oh my god it would not the uniform would be a little bit different yeah there'd be a lot of dudes in white socks and slides (laughs) with two full sleeve tattoos Uh smoking cigs not stogies with (laughs) with women in beautiful dresses and the hats and the whole thing be a lot of fist fights yep yeah. Instead of those big floppy hats, it'd be a bunch of new eras and wife beaters. It'd be a lot of new eras. <laughs> a lot <laughs> of flat brims. A lot of flat brims. Uh, yeah, definitely no cigars. There would be a couple of uh, Newport 100s. Um, for oh, yeah. sure. A lot of Coors Light. Yeah, Coors Light um, instead of like some nice Kentucky bourbon or whiskey. It's definitely yeah. Coors Light and Keystone. And it, all of the horses would just be named Insults Against Biden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would just be that. It would just be like Biden's a bitch. Yeah. Got my money on that. Sleepy Joe is out in front. Yep. Yeah. Sleepy Joe takes the lead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and it would just be a fun time. I'll yeah. Tell you that. Yeah. It's, it it's just people cheering for this horse's named against Joe Biden and people screaming about what a whore Nancy Pelosi is. I would be there. That atmosphere. Yeah. You can say all you want about the Belmont Stakes, the Preakness, the Kentucky Derby, but nothing will match the Ben Salem. Uh, uh, I don't know what you would call it. <laughs> Pelosi's the heavies comes out front. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pelosi's fun bags is pulling in the third. 
Oh, I would. Yeah, definitely. If you're going to get up there, get get up there. It's a great time. You'd have to get the inside scoop on a on a horse that was named Pelosi, because you know yeah. there'd be some insider trading. Yeah, involved. You know all. Dan the, knows all about that. Fuck yeah! I've been doing some insider trading at some local horse racing tracks. That's absolutely true. And you can do it around there. You can walk up to the jockeys like before they go on there, and every single jockey is like literally like. They max out at like five two. It's pretty yeah. incredible. Yeah, they definitely have done some magic in their day. Yeah. <laughs> they definitely eat lucky yeah. charms. They're like getting on the horse. I'm getting dragged out of there because I won't stop yelling. Pull a rabbit out of the hat next time. Like it just is becomes a problem up there. <laughs> it but, just reminded me of uh, the episode of It's Always Sunny when Charlie is hanging out with one of the uh, w- one of the dudes that w- what are they called again? They ride the horse. A uh, jockey. The jockey. He's yeah. hanging out with the jockey. Yeah, <laughs> and he's like talking to them and they're hanging out and now the the little jockey like charlie thinks that they're like elves or something and he's like all right man now what do you say we do a line off a of buster's boner <laughs> <laughs> talking about the horse's dick yeah <laughs> it's real weird i'm at, i'm actually pleasantly surprised um i'm pleasantly surprised a bit just a bit surprised um that you just don't see flopping horse boners out on the racetrack all the time yeah i guess they keep them uh high and tight yeah, when they're, when they're running because they're such big creatures that yeah, I guess when they're not hard, they're just kind of does it like they're tucked go up back there inside? You can't really. I don't know. It's a good yeah. question. I never really got deep down under there, but you know when they're hard. I mean, that is a fourth yeah. leg on those ma- magnificent creatures. Yeah, it's like a telephone pole that you just stick underneath of your body. Yeah, and it's. Uh, I think we should try and see what the, you know, a comparison would be like for humans if we just had humans a run. A flaccid horse penis versus, oh, oh like, sorry. Yeah, have like a flaccid, you know, person, just a bunch of naked men run the 900 hurdles or something. And we'll just see what that's like. <laughs> you wouldn't see much from me, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, but like if we get some Jamaicans in there, we can see what goes on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we get a couple of, uh, who's the... Um, uh, You'd have to diversify the race because if it was, if it was a bunch of white guys, I mean, you, you wouldn't see a thing. Yeah, especially if it's a Ben Salem, they would stop for a smoke break after about five steps. Yeah. yeah it'd be a bit of a problem. Wake up. Yeah. <laughs> You're embarrassing me. Oh, uh, speaking of the substitute teaching thing, back to that really quick. The only time I did have a long-term substitute teaching thing with, uh, was for a special ed class. Okay. Um, so usually they'll just call you. They're like, Dan, you're... Uh... You're qualified to You're, hang out for a couple more days. You are the pinnacle of what we need in this school district. Yep. Even though we've already reprimanded you two times, we're bringing you back and we're going to roll the dice on a third. And yeah. guess what? We're putting you in special ed eighth grade. <laughs> I'm playing the Patriot. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could have. I was like a substitute, but there was an aide in there and the aide takes... Uh, actually, no, it's the other way around, which is funny. You have a teacher and then you have like a teacher's aide, right? And you had a substitute. I was the substitute for the main teacher, so I actually took precedence over the teacher's aide who worked there full time and was in the class all year round. Oh. Because I was substituting for, like, I guess, in a way, the person above the teacher's aide. Yeah. So, so I was like, I kind of relinquished my duties to this person. I was just like, you're in here all year and you know them. Like, how about you just do all that and I'll help yeah. with whatever. Whatever you need. So I was around. And then a lot of the kids that were in that class were, had behavioral issues, to be honest. They weren't even like mentally, like, I feel like there was less of that and more behavior problems yeah so it got pretty feisty pretty quickly there was fights every day i was like what the fuck am i doing and yeah I paid 95 bucks a day. So, yeah. That's <laughs> I mean, not a bad rate. No, especially if you're home from college and, like, I'd rather be doing that. You're in there at 7.30, 8 o'clock, but you're done by 2. Yeah. You're only there weekdays um, during the day. It's not like nights and weekends working retail. It's like, fuck, I'll do this. That's not bad. 95 a day to, yeah. to only be there till 2 p.m.? Yeah, yeah. Especially, and if you do high school, it's probably, you I know, should do that, that on Fridays, dude. If you're off on Fridays, be a substitute. You can go to any school district. They are so desperate for substitute teachers. And in really? New Jersey... All you have to do is prove that you have 60 college credits. You give them some transcripts. You got to get fingerprinted for whatever fucking reason. Got to go into a school district. I guess they want to check in on people. And you can just substitute. And if you just pop in a movie. If you just tell their people that call you to schedule the substitute, they usually have like agencies that do it. Just say, I'm only available Fridays. They'll call you the night before the day of and say, we need you for Mrs. So-and-so's class. You go in there and you pop in the Patriot. Wow. <laughs> it's like, dude. All right. New side hustle. New side hustle. <clears throat> Everyone talks about their side hustles no one's talking about being a substitute teacher so yeah we should do that at new jersey all right you can mold the minds of america and have absolutely no interest in actually molding the minds of america it's a great side hustle what would you 
what what's the agenda that you would want to teach these young young minds um to not believe or trust anything they hear from the establishment media <laughs> yeah <laughs> or their parents yeah yep uncle dan's class that's what they would call me not mr callahan it'd be like it's uncle dan to you kids <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they go all right we have mr callahan coming in please it's, it's uncle dan it's uncle dan and i go and i write it on the board and the n is backwards <laughs> Just, yeah. and it's spelled with a k like i would be the creed of substitute teachers for creed from the oh, office yeah, with arms wide open yeah <laughs> With arms wide open, a different type of creed. So. Yeah, yeah, and I couldn't sing that around children too. That's probably yeah. They they would definitely flag. <laughs> yeah, they oh get flagged. I play that over in the morning announcements. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, ninety five, smooth as a baby's bottom over that sucker. You would have never known that somebody drove an oil tanker into it and, and blew it up. Um, oh, even uh, comedian uh, Joey Callahan, no relation, also commented on our uh, YouTube video uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, hey. he, he said it was a pleasure listening to you more talk about where 95 uh, where the issue in 95 was in comparison to like we were trying to figure out where it was actually located yeah and we had no fucking idea we were talking about the roosevelt boulevard we classic, well about. listen the classic boomer listener chiming in about how we don't know fucking directions we know <laughs> joey and my dad and the rest of those guys love to to grill in on you <laughs> About how you guys don't know how to fucking get anywhere. <laughs> you got to use the GPS. You don't know how to get it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just I was raised by a GPS and I can't go back. Yep. Yep. My brain got rid of it. Yep. My brain is so smart that it said, hey, guy, it's not necessary anymore. Yeah. You don't need to map quest in your mind. You yeah. A GPS, it tells you exactly where to go. Yeah. And you know how I found out afterwards of where it actually was? Was I looked up, I opened up Apple Maps and I just looked for where there was a road closure sign. That's how I figured out mm. where it was. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's not even close to where we were talking about. See where the traffic is? That's how I figured it out. Well, I did no prior research. Yeah. I just saw that I-95 collapsed and I just was wondering, hey, is this going to be close to fucking me up on my way into work? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think that kind of we're breaking news here is that we don't do any prior research to things we discuss on here. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of how we I roll. Know. I don't know if people would uh, be surprised to hear that. Yeah. But... Yeah. We're, we're kind of seen as uh, some some people do refer to us as the um, gem of a local news source in the South People Jersey have scene. been getting their local news from us. Yeah, I actually drove by the Courier Post this past weekend, and that place is in shambles. There's oh, like yeah? missing letters from the fucking wall. It was like, how, how do these people pump out subpar articles every single day? Yeah, it's just obituaries now. Yeah, and the obituaries are written by AI like I tried to submit. Yeah, it's just a terrible situation over there, and that's why we're filling a void. Is yeah. what we're doing. People want to see it. So yeah, sh fucking the whole world's going to hell in a handbasket. We got aliens. We got submarines that are distracting people from uh, um, everything else going on. We got the 95 situation. Um, but since this is an American uh, podcast uh, sponsored by many feminist movements across the country, and uh, this is the 4th of July coming around the country, I saw a very interesting article that came up. You let me know your thoughts on this. Okay. Uh, North Koreans have vowed to pulverize the American empire into dust. Um, they are celebrating the 73rd anniversary of the Korean War by having protests of 100,000 plus participants uh, mobilizing their hatred against the United States and South Korea. In South Korea or North Korea? So this is North Korea, but they hate the United States and the South Korea. I and South Korea, you know, their neighbor there. I don't know why they have such a hatred towards us. Do we know that that's true, or is that just Kim Jong Un? <laughs> just you know. Th just making shit up. This was from the Wall Street Journal. It seemed like they. This was, um, uh, you know, usually over there he can just say whatever. Very uninformed. Yeah. Just, didn't he tell him he like scores like a thousand points at a basketball game? Oh like, yeah, yeah. He's like, I just beat Dennis Rodman one on one, yeah, dunked yeah. balls in the face. Yeah. And he entered himself in the NBA All Star game. Yes. Didn't, didn't they, doesn't he say that he doesn't poop? Oh yeah, yeah. That's another thing that he says. Yep. He's like, no, nah, I just don't do it. Yeah. There's a. I'm the king. I don't poop. There's a fascinating documentary on North Korea that was put out. Uh, it was a U.S. one. Uh, caused a little bit of uh, ruffled feathers. Uh, it was with Seth Rogen and. Uh, oh yeah. Um, what was it uh, called? It wasn't the dictator. That was Sasha Baron Cohen. The dictatorship. It was um fuck. What was the name of it? It came I'm, out on I, Christmas Day. I know exactly ago. what you're talking about. But they were fired up about it. Almost caused a war. It, it almost, almost like a nuclear war. It almost did. And then Daddy Donald got in the office and he cooled things over with all of his dictator yeah. friends that he had. Kim. Kim John. 
Just relax, a joke. relax, buddy. Kim Jong Un. <laughs> so they had banners at this rally pledging to pulverize the American Empire. They denounced Washington, and they also had banners that were displaying nuclear missiles aimed at the U.S., chanting slogans calling for our annihilation. So, with oh, all that is terrifying. That is, but I, um, I think that we can find a silver lining in it. I'm sure. Um, better them than China doing it or Russia doing it. I mean, if we can get taken over by a dictatorship, who would you choose it to be? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a tough one. I mean, you definitely don't want North Korea. I mean, it sounds like it's horrible over there. It would just be fun because if they actually did try launching nukes, you'd see those shits going sideways like rogue fireworks. Like they don't even like they can't even test them properly. Yeah, it would be a bit of a we would have some fun with it at least with that one. Yeah, we fucking swat those right out of the air, dude. Yeah, just like a fucking lantern fly. We just can't get this fuck out of here. They'd send you out there, dude. <laughs> guns a blazing in the outfit. Yeah, dude. I'm. <laughs> Imagine you on the battlegrounds just in that outfit. And I'd be running with the flag like at the end of the Patriot. I want you. <laughs> it would be a combination of Braveheart and the Patriot and somebody that suffered from radiation poisoning. That's me running you, out there. Yeah, you running out with all, all the, the fire behind you. Yeah. That'd be just quite a scene. The courier post blowing up behind me, but I'm just running with the flag to the Delaware River. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. would love that. Yeah, North, North Korea would suck. If, if they took you over because it sounds like uh, not too fun over there. No, it doesn't sound like it'd be a very fun living situation if they... Ch China's at least building some stuff. It seems like they got, like, you know... Good plan. Their economy's at least going, but you kind of just have no freedom. That That's a bit of an issue. Yeah. Like, it's a bit of a totalitarianism. Like, we might be able to drive down the costs of iPhones if they were made by the Chinese on American soil, but they would be censoring the hell out of what we could use them for. Yeah, exactly. So it just, things would be censored. So you have some pluses and some minuses. iPhones, you wouldn't have to be put on a payment plan for three years to pay it off. Government but, could abduct you if they don't like what you're saying. Yeah, just and they you disappear. They would block a lot of porn that they find disgusting. You know, how, like an Asian porn, they yeah. like blur out like dicks and stuff like that, which would be a problem for yeah. me. Um, so I don't know if I could wear this shirt. Yeah, they would say that that's a fan. Actually, no, aren't ninjas Japanese? I don't know. We're gonna get ourselves in trouble. I. I <laughs> I think you're right. I think ninjas samurais are, are Chinese. No, samurais are Japanese, and ninjas might be universal. The, but I, well, yeah, yes. they might be. They might be a ninja Chinese, is a Japanese. A ninja is a job Korean. title. Yeah, and I, if samurai is like a historical cultural reference to the yeah, last yeah. samurai is Tom Cruise. I was going to say it was Tom Cruise, right? And he's Japanese. Yeah, he's um, very prominent. He's right up there with Bruce Lee, very big Japanese. They feel like, we need a good Japanese actor for this. And they're like, well, let's get Tom Cruise. We want Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. he's like, I'll do it. Yeah, it, w it was between him and uh, Joaquin Phoenix. So, yeah. Um, yeah, those two, two of my favorite Japanese actors. Um and even, I mean, just more, while the end is happening all around us, we do get some silver linings in the news cycle. Mari Povich is launching his at-home paternity test fitting, uh, fittingly called the Results Are In. Wait, his at-home paternity test? He He's made an at-home paternity test? Yep, Mari Povich is now, have he has paternity tests that are being done by uh, the DNA Diagnostic Center, which is the company that he used on his talk show. Wow, even Mari's working from home. He's like, we don't need to come into the studio. <laughs> Yeah. Let's get your results and find out who's the father yeah. at home. Yeah. I would love to see him doing that. Meanwhile, his wife, Connie Chung, is in the background, and he's just fucking screaming Is that screaming who he's married to? Yeah. Oh, I, don't really? know if, I don't know if he's... I'm assuming he still is, but he was for a while last no time way. I checked. Connie Chung? Yeah. Yep. She's got the <laughs> Spe balls of Mari. Speaking of samurai, so yeah. <laughs> that is not okay, Dan. You should know better as the you know as a patriot of this podcast. Yep. Yep. I mean, patriot God. for all of us, including Mari Povich. Uh, he's 80. Four years old, man. He's really still he's, still kicking. He's pumping him out. Do you have a picture of like what he looks like nowadays? Yeah, dude. Let me show you a picture of him because I saw the article. I and, uh, I grew up on Mari, man. When I was home, when you were homesick from school, remember flipping on Mari? Yeah, it was just that and Jerry Springer. That's so all wild, it was. Just a wild talent show. Yeah, dude. There's a photo of him. Oh, it looks, he article. looks the same. Yeah, he's honestly, he's got a few more wrinkles. Looks like he... Uh, looks might... like a bit of a flaccid penis. Another yeah. callback. Another flaccid guy. I would name a racehorse after him as well. But yeah. he, um, yeah, so he's... <laughs> just name it, you're not the father. 
<laughs> you're not the father yet. Yeah. Oh, that horse can run. Damn, and that would be a South Jersey bred horse. Like you could see that name and be like, "Yep, that horse definitely came right out of Sicklerville." Yeah. Like, yeah, we raise it on a farm down in Woodstown, and the, <laughs> you are not the father. Damn it! If I ever get like a quarter of a million dollars, <laughs> I'm buying a horse and naming yeah. it that. You might be the father would be a good horse name. Yeah. <laughs> you might be the father in first. You might be the father and it would run away from the pack so fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the results are in is the name of his company. And uh, the results are in for anybody who uses it. You might be white trash. Uh, but I would definitely get some of these. See how accurate they are. Yeah, um, we should do it live on the pod. See if we should. pregnant. Yeah, so users can collect and submit their own DNA samples without the need for medical assistance, so you know they're going to be accurate. He claims that they are 99.99% accurate. Um, Submitting test samples without permission could have legal consequences as well. Um, Mm -hmm. They just wanted to throw that one in there. I'm not sure who that's targeted at. Let's Um, test old Jackie boy. Oh, submitting test samples without... Yeah, you might. Yeah. Just in case, you know. Yeah. Has he been exhibiting any signs of something that may lead you to believe that he's not your kid? Like, are, are his calves, like, just flaccid? <laughs> you can't tell on the calves yet, but he's got a good size piece, which I'll be honest, is a little bit out of the ordinary. Yeah, it is. Is that not a Donegan trait? <laughs> I don't know. Look, I won't say... Uh, you know anything private mm-hmm. on here but let's just say i am uh, i was surprised you were surprised you were you were floored at what you saw yes yeah you gotta you gotta get a little bit of extra room in those diapers huh yep. yeah yeah damn well yeah i think we should do a live paternity test but we can't tell sam it's happening we just gotta kind of sneak it we'll submit it it'll be a little little uh, on the shady side yeah and uh, we'll announce it right on here so i think that'd be great all right cool. yeah he'll have some footage to show his friends down the road of uh, how uh, those tests came to be yeah i'm pretty sure he's mine i'm pretty sure i'm joking he's obviously my <laughs> kid if anybody's listening, it's like he's pretty fucking serious. Damn it. Well, now these paternity tests are become a lot more readily available for viewers of the Mari Povich show. I think I'm going to be getting quite a few phone calls from a lot of ex-girlfriends. I'm going to be blocking numbers all night tonight. Oh, yeah. All, <laughs> all two of them. Yeah. All two of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. Whole, uh, <laughs> like, I wonder how my ex-boyfriend's Dan's doing. They look up your YouTube video. They just see you in a fucking Uncle Sam outfit on YouTube in, in your basement. Yeah. yeah. They're like, uh, I, I dodged a bullet. I would <laughs> rather be a single mom. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather smoke crack. Yep. Yep. Oh, my uh, preschool teacher, Mrs. Watson, won't be calling me anymore after oh, all. <laughs> that was your ex? Yep. 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 She was only, I think she was in her late 40s when I was in preschool. So we rekindled the flame after I got out of uh, middle school. Did you? And uh, yeah. Yeah. She was a lunch lady at the high school at the time, would take her smoke breaks during my lunch period. So we had a little bit of free time. That's hot. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of hot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nothing is more hot than like you think it's like some pepper or oregano that's seasoning your square pizza that's making out with someone after having a cheese sandwich (laughs) and she just had a cigarette yeah god that's gross yeah sprinkled some of the cigarette ashes on the pizza oh it gave it a real nice taste i liked it get over here sweetheart yeah get over here i want to tell you something your mother won't tell you come on danny boy you little bitch i think one of my all-time favorite moments from lunch time at in middle school we were a bunch of rascals in uh, middle school, always causing problems. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if I've told this story on there. I might have where we went into the bathroom. Someone kicked a urinal off the wall and there was water shooting everywhere. A lunch lady was screaming at us to get out of the bathroom, but mm. she couldn't go in. So she was just yelling. My one friend, because she couldn't come in and we were in the bathroom, she couldn't come in there. He just decided to be funny to yell, bite my dick. So he yelled, <laughs> he yelled, bite my dick. The principal came in there. He got us out. As we're walking out, the old lunch lady is standing there and she's telling the principal what we did. And she leans into him and I am walking by and I hear her say, they were in there screaming, bite my dick. <laughs> <laughs> The the shit that full-grown adults that are teaching in a school system. I I was just about to say one of the funniest things of of thinking about um, being a teacher and you think back about moments like that when you were in school is thinking that they had to go tell someone like what what the kids did. Yeah. You go, well, uh, they screamed at me and told me to bite their dick. (laughs) Yeah. I'd like to go on the record and say they screamed, yeah. bite my dick. You have to have the parents come in and they have detention. They go, what, what did Billy do? And they go, well, he told me to bite his dick. <laughs> you got to have that conversation with a grown adult. Oh, my God. Did you have any stories like that or act in a fool in the lunchroom during cafeteria? There was a kid uh, that 
he was leaving the school. Yeah. Um, and he knew he was. It was like his last week. And he went and pissed on the the radiator yeah. inside the bathroom. Holy shit! So it just spread all throughout the hallway. Oh, just smelled like piss yeah. everywhere. There was also they had to they they took away our bathroom privileges because of that. And then there was also the I think we were in seventh grade, and all the sixth and seventh grade boys. There was one kid that started it. Yeah, he would take the biggest dumps. Yeah. of all time like you would be you'd go in and everyone would go and see they would go yo so and so just t- took took a dump and you would be you would laugh so hard because it was so big yeah it was yeah, so yeah disgusting <laughs> then people started dumping on top of it and, oh. was, and throwing stuff in there and trying they were like stacking dumps damn so it <laughs> it looked like a porta potty at woodstock 99 yeah. in a matter of hours and they were literally like either the janitor or a teacher must have came in and be like what the fuck are you guys doing <laughs> they're like you guys literally can't use the bathroom anymore <laughs> jesus christ they had to like they they like sat us all down they had like a big like big meeting about it no more shitting on top of shit Listen, you guys can't go in there and shit on top of shit because if it sits there for so long, we clean these bathrooms like once a quarter. Yeah. <laughs> Twice a marking period, if that. So if the shit on top of the shit just sticks together, you got a whole clump of shit. <laughs> and the more that piles up. Imagine being the guy that, like, the adult that works there, too, and he's got to run to the bathroom. And he's like, God damn it. God <laughs> damn it. They're shitting on their shit again. <laughs> I can't get to hold it in until I get home. Why don't you kids just do a classic upper decker? Yeah. <laughs> I would clean it out of there, no problem. People were like throwing pencils in it and stuff. Oh, really? Shit. Disc- I mean, that, if I saw that as an adult, I would puke. Damn. So that it just probably looked like a like mountain, like a meatloaf it, with shit in it. It was the porta potty. It was exactly that, but it's it's one tiny toilet. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it was uh, really fucked up. Holy shit. That is, that's, that's fucked up because I could not imagine being a janitor in a school district. Doesn't matter if it's elementary it. up to high school. In a school. Oh, my God. Kill me. Do you remember if somebody were to throw up and they would come in and throw sawdust on it? Did oh they yeah, ever do that all the time. I was like, "What the fuck?" Why was, that was for the smell, right? It was for the smell, but it absorbed it really quickly too. Yeah. So like, if somebody puked, like for whatever, they, they always had sawdust. Like just they always had around. sawdust on their like trash can that they would push up and down the uh, hallways. But there was always a girl that would just puke on herself. Like, yeah. what the fuck was that? Just about? out of nowhere. No, yeah. No rhyme or reason. She'd just be sitting there and put down her pencil with the weird eraser <laughs> on it. She'd just put it down and then puke in her lap. And yeah. I'm like, they, they never know it's coming. Just bleh. yeah. Yeah, Just in the middle of the desk. It's so funny. Like, what are kids eating that they just are randomly throwing up at different times? Of the day, Probably you know? public school lunches. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> could, <laughs> could be it made by the lunch ladies that were smoking out yeah. back. <laughs> you have no idea it's coming. That's yeah, so funny. But they just do that. And my janitors in my school district, they always had one trash can, and they had all of their stuff attached to it. Yeah. So you just see a guy walking up and down the hallway with a trash can. Sometimes they get the mop bucket. Yeah. But exclusively for vomit was the sawdust. Oh yeah. I was like, where are you getting all this? sawdust can you buy that by the gallon at like home depot yeah where do you get that or are they just sawing wood in the fucking janitor's closet like i gotta get ready for more puke yeah these kids are puking left and right they're just sawing fucking desks Saw apart some two by fours yeah <laughs> that's incredible so funny um so here is another fun thing that i uh saw recently that really really hits home with me um killer whales are not our friends was the title of an article written in the oh, atlantic God. did you see this no but it's like we we've had a couple this year of just whales like eating people well that and that's the thing is what this guy was referring to with the whales so it's been happening off the iberian coast which is uh portugal and spain they're like their own little continent and i'm really interested in this because i'm going to portugal in august oh really i want to go fucking find orca whales i've always been a huge orca whale guy i like adopted one as a kid but i'm sure eight hundred thousand other kids adopted the same fucking whale yeah well whales are dope yeah free willy best fucking movie for kids kids that's outside like the disney realm at the oh, time yeah. free willy was amazing incredible so orca whales off the iberian coast have been ramming boats they sunk three this year oh i did i loosely heard about this sorry yeah Go ahead. but they, they sunk three this year they've da- damaged several more and they're not just boats they're like rich guys yachts out yeah. in the fucking ocean so the rich guys are getting fucking pissed that these whales that they can't just start fucking spearing like back in the old days yeah. are fucking their boats up and they're having the time of their lives doing it is the thing yeah they are so playfully just fucking ramming their boats and destroying them 
Um, and this guy, this biologist said that they're doing it on purpose. This guy, uh, a biologist, Alfredo Lopez Fernandez, has a paper um, that says a specific female known to scientists as White Gladys may have suffered a critical moment of agony and at the, ha- at the hands of humans. So something happened to her that was based on like humans did to her or someone in their pod. So she attacked a boat in retaliation and then taught other whales to do the same. Oh, yeah, that's what I heard. So that's what they do is that White there's Gladys. a... Gladys coming back with vengeance. White Gladys. I haven't seen a White Gladys since the lunch lady in high school. Yeah. And she was a beast of a woman too. Yeah. And now I'm glad she's taken the form of an orca and they're just sinking yachts in Iberia. So they're just hitting them so hard they're putting holes in the side of the boats. But they're like they're like playfully doing it. I think the, the whales that learned the behavior from White Gladys are just like, I guess this is what we do now. And they're just going to the boats and they wow. just ram them and they, they just put holes in their Yeah, because hole. that can't be for any benefit other than vengeance. Yeah, it's vengeance is what they're saying, that they're just getting revenge on them. And they've sunken three of them, which is fucking wow, incredible. That's crazy. So so they pissed off, the, the humans pissed them off for whatever reason. Yeah. They're coming back, they're doing that. This whale's teaching yeah. the others how to do it. Yep. Teaching them how to do it, and then I'm hoping it's going to spread, and then orcas are going to be the ones taking over. I was going to say, like, I, I wonder if they'll learn... Just that boats are kind of an enemy in general because they're always, yeah. you know, they're they're catching stuff, they're dumping shit in there. Yeah. If if whales will start to naturally just attack boats, well, they do um, not attack boats, but like a lot of whales, orcas especially, like they'll find fishing vessels and they'll sit beneath them, and when they pull nets out of the water, oh, just they'll just snag them. They'll just snack, um, snack, snack, and snag anything that falls out of the nets or they'll just grab the nets and tear them apart. Yeah. And do be- they choke on, like on the netting? Like, I'm sh- does, that, does that happen? I'm sure they do. I don't hear it a lot about orcas. I'm sure it happens. They're very smart. They're actually considered dolphins. They're not even whales. See, right. People are learning things here. We're, we are the David Attenboroughs of South Jersey. Wait, <clears throat> is there, isn't there a theory that whales and dolphins at one point were on land and then they became amphibious? That would be incredibly interesting did i, just, I would did love I make that up is that just like a wild naive theory that very well could be we gotta ask him when he comes on here i'm gonna give it a goog real real quick give it a goog um yeah the uh all the orcas basically this article was just this guy was just ch- taking the side of humans and he's just like yeah these orcas he what he called them were sadistic jerks <laughs> so he called orca whales yeah um, oh you they're the it? sadistic jerks yeah <laughs> That uh, we capture and put in captivity. Yeah. So there is something to this. Let me see if I can find this. Yeah, yeah. Take a look for it. We do our research live here so that we we fact check ourselves. We just don't throw around pretty crazy theories that I hope are true. Maybe it's that they, they were amphibious and then they got to land. Like, hang on. I think largely it, it kind of goes back to like what you see with tadpoles and frogs. Tadpoles are fully aquatic, like um, tails, no feet, and they live in water, but then they eventually morph into frogs and then frogs live on land. So it so this is what it says. It says, although whales are expert swimmers and perfectly adapted to life underwater, these marine mammals once walked on four legs. What? Their land-dwelling ancestors lived about 50 million years ago. So they had legs, and then they just got in the water, and then they just adapted and learned how to breathe for long periods of time. Holy shit. Isn't that crazy? Fucking, could you imagine orca whales on land, like feet yeah, on I mean, them? Kind of, yeah, I mean, not, uh, the closest thing I can think of is a hippopotamus. Yeah, that would be the, I mean, orca whales are way bigger than them, too. Yeah. I've seen some of them in the, in some of these um, videos. That, that would make sense, though. I wonder if they interacted with humans, and that's why they don't attack them. Because yeah, they there has never been a reported case of a orca attacking a human in the wild. People swim with them all the time. They've never been attacked by one. Like so, people can they you can swim. I mean, not that it's encouraged, but. So people have swam with orcas in the wild. They don't attack them. They, they do it in Norway. I watched a documentary Whoa. on YouTube about it. They take expeditions out into the bays of Norway and they will have um, ships and you just sit there and you wait for orcas to come. Then you put on wetsuits. They get you in a dinghy and they send you out in the water and you just jump in and you swim with them. And these people were in really? water. The orcas were swimming right at them. And then as they got close, they would just flip over on their backs and go underneath of them. Like, wow. They would but, just, but yeah. What about the ones that you always see like, 
is it total accident that they'll occasionally land on kayakers or or they'll yeah. come up and they'll just like accidentally eat them or yeah the humpbacks do that all the time the they're the ones that breach like that and it uh becomes a problem gotcha, um, gotcha. the orcas they they never attack and they're the like apex predators of the ocean right um what the guy was saying that he's so pissed at orcas about were that um because internet users portray orcas as folk heroes and revolutionary figures for attacking these boats but orcas are well known for hunting and slaughtering sharks and seals for sport um and he said once you start applying human sounds like humans yeah he's like once you start applying human ethical standards to apex predators things get dark fast and i'm like yeah i said the same exact thing i was like how about all the shit that humans have done over the years yeah, we hunt for sport all the time it, they have every right to be pissed the fuck off and sink a few kayaks and uh yeah. yachts <laughs> it's like yeah have at it we we even slaved you guys for entertainment purposes for years who were the first guys like that even realized that orcas were friendly to swim with. Like how crazy you have to be to get in the water with them and go, I feel like they're, it'll be fine. Like I know that their teeth are bigger than my head. Like they're so giant. There's yeah. It's, and it's, then you get in with a shark and you go, hang on a second. These guys are different. Yeah. Yeah. You, you all of a sudden start swimming with a Who shark off, in the waters off, these puppies? off the coast of Egypt in the red sea. And you're like, wait a second. Yeah. These things aren't so friendly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and some of them, I saw a video too. There was apparently a shark that is well known to the, um, around the Bahamas and has a name and the same shark guy will go back. And this shark is a, um, um, tiger shark will go up and like act like a puppy towards this guy what? and they, he just plays with him underwater and he recognizes him and he comes back to him and he never has bit him oh, years and is, years that is a trip but he's just like yeah people think that sharks are so terrifying and dangerous when they're actually pretty friendly it's like i don't think you should be telling people tiger sharks are friendly yeah, i don't know <laughs> if you can make that generalization guy yeah so yeah because now you're just gonna be like hey tiger sharks are pretty friendly they're just like puppy dogs yeah. and then uh, you jump in there with them i could watch whale documentaries all day I might Dude, go home and flip one on. I'll have to send you the one that I saw of watching these people in Norway. It's like a 20 minute thing. It's not, but it's, no, it's not blackfish. No, no, this, it's not even a documentary. It's just a long YouTube video. Oh, okay. of like a, yeah. Send that to me. Yeah. They go to Norway and they swim with them. It's pretty awesome. I, I was like, I was like, was there a segment in blackfish where they talk about people in Norway that, that do that? I haven't seen that in a while. But. I watched one on Keiko. Remember Keiko, the, uh, f the whale that was very similar to free Willy back in like the early two thousands. Uh, probably. They, they talk about trying to re uh, reestablish him out of captivity and it's actually really difficult um to take that what whales that are in captivity and bring them back out into the wild because yeah, sure. a lot of pods of whales won't accept them yeah. into their pod Get and then fucked up yeah yeah so yeah we're, we're ho hopefully i can be over there and report live from the scene in portugal as an orca whale is attacking the boat i would never be so happy to go down with my ship oh fuck yeah <laughs> <laughs> just ride that fucking thing in and wouldn't have any interest in attacking me just the boat it's Just all right. the They're out for vengeance. Yeah. yeah. Um, here's a couple of local news things. We can kind of wrap up on some of these. Um, this article of a terrified and terrified by New York City rent prices, an intern commutes weekly from South Carolina to New Jersey. A 21 year old girl um, was terrified of paying rent in New Jersey, so she just started commuting from South Carolina. Um, what she does is she flies in once a week from Charleston to Newark and takes an Uber to Persephone, which is about a 30 minute Uber ride. She said all in, it's about 150 bucks a week and it's way less than what she'd be paying in rent. <laughs> so she went viral talking she, about where this. Where does she stay when she's in New Jersey? Apparently when she only has to go in once a week and she's virtual, the rest. So she wakes up early enough to take a flight. I'm assuming it's a cheap spirit or frontier flight and she has no bags other than a personal item. She wakes up early enough to get into the office Wednesday morning and then she flies home Wednesday night. That's fucking absurd. <laughs> However... You can't like the the math might make sense on that. Like, let's say, yeah, uh, an apartment for a uh, one bedroom is like three grand. Yeah, and let's say she lives in South Carolina. If it, her rents, I don't know, six hundred, seven hundred dollars. Yeah, spend a hundred, hundred fifty bucks a week to commute. Yeah, I mean that, that that could totally add up. And it does say rent prices in New York are currently at record highs. The median price of a studio apartment. Let me guess. You, you take a guess at the what the median price? The median price of a studio apartment in New York City. It doesn't say Manhattan or Brooklyn, but just general. I would say uh, three grand. Awfully close. You took the under, and you just you know, price is right. You'd be on the 30, stage with thirty two hundred. Thirty two hundred. Fuck yeah. Thirty two hundred is the average studio. 
apartment price in New York City. That is a studio apartment would be the, the size of our podcast studio. That's so, not even, dude. No, no, you wouldn't have a fucking recliner. They're, they're legitimate hallways. Yeah, like, that's so absurd. I don't know how people that live in New York afford it. That's it's so fucking crazy. Yeah, so it definitely makes sense, and I, I love that. Uh, a studio in uh, Persephone averages nearly two thousand. So it's like, do you want to live in North Jersey, right outside the city? Do you want to live in the city, or just fly? Like, at what point is it so ridiculous that you would rather fly? Fly once a week on a shitty airline just the whole traveling going in and out of airports yeah. twice a week you got to go to and then from you got to go in and out of an airport twice a week that's fucking crazy that's how bad it's gotten damn that, that that's wild that's that's new jersey and new york for you though north jersey problems though i feel like we're getting there with philly prices though yeah F- philly has always been um, more expensive than South Jersey. Mm-hmm. Not a crazy, like I, you know, we both used to live in Philly. It, yeah. It was pretty reasonable, like for what we found, but like, yeah, it's definitely like when you move back to South Jersey, you're like, oh man, it's nice not to be yeah. paying that rent. And people just, I think, caught on to the fact that it was a top 10 metro area as far as population and growth of industries and stuff like that. It's way cheaper than New York, but it's still, you it's know, climbing. It, it's still pricey. Yeah. It definitely is very pricey. So. I mean, you, the good thing about Philly is you could still find some spots in Philly where you can get a very reasonable rent yeah yeah new york it it seems impossible unless you have 32 roommates yeah and then even if you can't get in new york you got to go over to north jersey then you got to deal with getting into new york from there even jersey city is one of the most expensive places that you can rent in the in the country yeah i lived there for a year yeah (sighs) fucking sucked me dry sucked me dry sucked me sideways (laughs) so good old fucking new jersey um I got a, a couple of last things here. Basically, I'll make them very brief. Um, New Jersey breweries need fewer restrictions, and they're about to be reinstated July 1st unless there's new legislation passed, which 61% of New Jersey residents oppose the restrictions. You remember when they put those in last year? They, wait, they oppose the restrictions? Yeah. Gotcha. Basically, the big the food and restaurant industry lobbied the shit out of um, the governor and everybody in New Jersey, yep. and they put in these restrictions on breweries because they were making a killing and taking business away from established restaurants and bars and that stuff. had to pay for a liquor license. E- exactly. So that's where they've had like different rules and regulations. So they basically bitched enough and paid enough money to where New Jersey lobbied. They lobbied them to have this happen. So now breweries, uh, they were restricted from serving food and they could only have a limited number of events to 25 a year. Yeah. It differed based on the type of brewery. Nine different breweries have closed this year after these restrictions. Yeah. And I, I tried to start a show at a brewery and they're like, hey man, we'd love to, but like we yeah. eliminated our events. It's so fucking crazy. And the majority of New Jerseyans are just like, what the fuck are you doing? Because people love breweries. Yeah. They are great. Are you going to be the dad that goes to the brewery with a stroller? Right. I think we've talked oh, about yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Baby we've already, the stroller. We've yeah. already done it. Fuck yeah. I've hit up the old Tonewood with, with Jackie. Old Tonewood. Yeah. That's a so nice it's spot. It's a perfect spot for. Some new parents, dude. Yeah. You fucking strap the baby to your chest. You have a couple of brews. It's not crazy like a bar yeah. where you got to worry about like a fight breaking out or mm-hmm. it's like two pa- I mean, like depending on the brewery, but like a lot of times the breweries are just a little bit more of a chill vibe. Yeah. Yeah. They got and games there and everything. Yeah. You guys could probably stumble home from there too. Yeah. We, yeah. We, when we go there, we walk. Yeah. That's perfect, that's perfect then. Perfect. You don't even have to worry about. It sucks because yeah. then it's, you know, I, I understand the argument where it's like, hey, why do we have to pay a liquor license? And then these guys are getting out of it because of a loophole. Yeah. But it just stuck. It sucks that it's like, hey, well, the solution is going to be we're going to fuck everybody because it's like you still got to pay that. Yeah. Liquor license, which is crazy. And then you guys were going to limit you to either shut down or like, yeah, you, know, you can't do the fun events. Yeah. Yeah. And those events bring in so much money for those places. Yeah. Not even just comedy shows, but uh, quizzo nights or karaoke or um, uh, cover bands, wh- whatever it is. Th- that's like how they make a lot of money. And they do like, I'm doing a cornhole Make tournament. your own beer if you don't want to have a liquor license then, bro. Yeah. Yeah. You're just going to send people to just making beer in their bathtub again. We're going to enter prohibition time. So yeah, they, they got to get their shit together on that. So hopefully. I'm sorry. And what was so they're saying that uh, what was the the law? So the it wasn't even a law. It was just new restrictions, and they had a new bunch of them. Restrictions were put in place last year. Yeah, they were, and um, they're about to be reinstated for another oh, year. God. Okay, unless lawmakers are able to do something by July 1st, which is this weekend. 
It's like, how are you able to pass laws before a holiday weekend? Like, I feel like they they did that. I feel like they did that on purpose. That's a real fucked up move. We're like, hey, let's get something on the yeah. books on a holiday weekend. Should like, we start voting locally to see? Like, will anybody make a, <laughs> will anyone I, make a difference? I love that we're like, hey, this is fucked up. They're going out to breweries and we're like, should, should we, we vote? Should we do something? <laughs> should, <laughs> what can we... Should we vote? Should we do something? Uh, no, it doesn't no. work. Just some fucking asshole accountant mm, running for county alderman. Blast us in the ass. Nah, we're not that stupid. Let's not vote. Like, I, I wonder <laughs> if if we paid attention to who is running for council within New Jersey specifically. Is there anybody that you... Because, obviously, we're, we're uninformed. Is there anyone we could vote for right now that is actually trying to do some good stuff like lower their property taxes in New Jersey or like, you know, do the le- lessen the restrictions with the breweries, things like that. Things that we care about. Things that we care. Yeah. Cause that's the thing is that when you see, and I know we've talked about it with the last election, I feel like there's elections every year. There's nonstop political smear ads. Now you might be able to get Papa bear to vote. If you start talking about things I care about. Yeah. Start talking about that. They just bring up things on there that we don't give a shit about like healthcare and education and abortions. It's like, come on, talk about what we want to care. Breweries. breweries. Let's get breweries. Um, uh, speed limit changes. Uh, people that stop at an easy pass toll booth have to go to jail for 30 days. Things that we would get behind. Right. What else is something like a real hot button issue for you? Um, Raising the uh, legal uh, driving limit, the uh, BAC, from a .08. We got to raise that to at least a .12. Yeah. Let's get some of those things going. Yeah. I'm trying to think of other things I give a shit about, and I got to think really hard about it. What can we... Uh, I think... Yeah, just they, they it's really boring topics what they talk about is yeah. the thing. Let's let's liven the place up a bit. We'll start doing some research. We'll start doing some research. And we'll start our own campaign. If we if we get a couple of a couple of our broads are funding this, maybe we can help get them to fund a what do they call somebody that you put money behind? Um like a super PAC. Is that what they call it? I don't know. Let, we'll look up some political lingo and jargon. <laughs> we'll, we'll throw it out there. We'll, and, uh, we'll throw things out there. Let's see if we can find a guy. If any of you have interest in running for office, let us back you. Because we'll, we'll help sway the opinion in Camden County. And we'll get you elected, and then we'll start changing shit up. We'll start knocking out these brewery laws and all types of shit. That's our next commercial is you and I running for office of, for New Jersey. And we're just going to put out smear ads against just random people and just talk so much shit and see what we can get. That's a- what we do. What can you get away with in a smear ad, like talking shit on somebody? Like they want to label misinformation on a bunch of stuff, but can we make an, a we've political? We've been doing it. Mike Persons and Jerry Montague. Yeah, we've been talking so <laughs> much shit on this program. Their lawyer is going to come after us. Yep. Um. And yeah, I just want to see what we can get away with on a fake person. Like, what if we just started slandering a fake person, put, put it up there? Let's get it going. We could try it. Yeah. We're going to keep that shit going. And uh, this is something else we can get behind. It's the last thing I have. New Jersey senators are discussing a lawmaker psilocybin legalization bill in the committee. Whoa. Finally. Speaking our language. Speaking right. our language now. They held a hearing on a bill to legalize psilocybin mushrooms for adults 21 and up. Wow. They're... they're y- New Jersey is surprisingly making some progress with, with yeah. uh, the psychedelic movement. Psych- they, first, they did the marijuanas a couple years ago. Oh, yeah. We got that compared to, uh, I think it's medically legal in PA, maybe Delaware, but like here yeah, it's like, at least full-blown legal. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised that we were kind of leading the charge with some of the state or yeah. surrounding states on that one. And still aside, man, I mean, that, that would be amazing. Yeah, it, it said in the bill that it would allow possession, home cultivation, gifting psilocybin mushrooms, as well as establishing licensed businesses for supervised access to psychedelics, mm. which that's going to be big because that they've actually very scientifically proven in that numerous ways of that helping people with uh, if they yeah. have cancer or terminal illnesses and, and stuff like that. PTSD is another big one. And then for us who just want to fuck around and get a little funky. Speak for yourself there, jobless. Yeah, yeah, actually me. <laughs> yeah, Uncle works. Sal, I love a good psilocybin that home cultivating. I'll be growing this shit in the backyard of my Millville trailer home. Allegedly. Damn right. Allegedly. I will be if they pass a law. I don't break any laws yeah. like that. This, but is that's, why, this is why we started Protect Our Jobs once a month. Protect our Dan jobs said some wild stuff on here yeah we we do have to do that true and we can go right in i think this is episode 49 if i'm being honest so maybe we'll have the big five O with a, a protect our jobs episode maybe we can make that happen yeah um but 
yeah, that, I think that wraps it up on here. Um, we got some good stuff coming uh, yeah. soon. I, we're getting uh, Naeem on soon to talk a little bit more UFOs. We got a lot of good feedback from that, so people want to hear a little bit more yeah. from him. So yeah. we're going to have him on soon. Um, we talk the talk and we walk the walk. Oh, we, we are going to be walking the walk. We got a lot of stuff to cover there. We got a, the Black Bob Lazar is going to be making an appearance. Oh, yeah. Yep. Naeem Lazar is coming on. Naeem Lazar. We got to protect our jobs with, yep. um, what, what are their names? Jerry and Mike. They'll G- be on. Jerry Montague and Mike Persons. We'll, we'll be getting them on soon. Those ones get a little wild, so be some prepared yep. for some toilet flushes, and then we'll have to just get out in the open. We keep on talking. Now, I think I'm going to have to uh, apply for a filming permit in Camden so we can go to a tailgate at the Tweeter Center. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to fucking do it, and if I pay for... I'm going to fucking do it. If I, if I'm going to fucking do it, and if I pay 25 bucks for a filming permit to the city of Camden, you bet your sorry ass that I'll be there with a table set up handing out business cards for the SJBBs. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you guys go get a, go get drunk and strike somebody with your fist this weekend in honor of America. God bless. We'll see you later.